An asteroid thought to be up to 50 metres in diameter is expected to make a close shave with our planet on Saturday, although scientists are not sure just how close. However, it's thought to be unlikely that 2013 TX-68, as it's known, will collide with the Earth. I'm here with Mikhail Kahn from the European Space Agency, an expert in asteroids and space debris. Mikhail, to what extent does this asteroid pose a threat now? The problem with this asteroid is we don't know much about it. We know approximately what its orbit is. We don't even know how big it is. We know it's somewhere between 20 and 50 meters in diameter. But we know the orbit to the extent that it allows us to say that it won't hit the Earth in March 2016. And we will have two encounters in this century, and there it probably won't hit the Earth either. What would happen if an asteroid of that kind of size hit the Earth? This is kind of an iffy size. So if it's, um, it's likely, if it's on the smaller end of this uh, range of diameters, that it would just explode in the atmosphere, like the one in Chelyabinsk a few years back, uh, over Chelyabinsk. That exploded and uh, caused some damage, but no, luckily no uh, casualties. But um, it might conceivably hit the surface and make a hole, and then you'd be looking at really at a real problem, damage and, and possibly also lots of people killed. In general, to what extent are asteroids a threat to us now? Asteroids have always been a threat to the Earth. If you look at the, the surface of the Earth, it's pockmarked with uh, impacts. But luckily, the larger the impacts are, the more damage they, they uh, incurred, the less frequently they happen. So it's not a very uh, likely thing to happen, but if a big impact happens, it might have consequences that uh, entail the end of the civilization as we know it. But uh, that's not a likely thing to happen. It's just dep everything depends on the size of the asteroid. So if you're talking about something like uh, that has a kilometer in diameter, then that would have global consequences. What are we doing about it? You can do two things about it. Um, one thing is, the first thing you should always do is to understand how big the problem is and try to track, you know, you understand your enemy, basically. So we should, and we do uh, track asteroids. We have telescopes staring into the sky for that purpose. And when they see something that looks like an asteroid, so it's moving, then the data are uh, gathered and the orbit is computed and it goes into a database. And that database is kept up to date, so we know where it is now, where it will be in a century from now. But uh, there, is, there are limits to that. We cannot see, we cannot observe the smaller ones. So the smaller they get because they're dark and, and then pr some of them come from the direction of the sun, like this one we're talking about. So the problem is you can't observe them and there's always a, a risk a uh, residual risk that you cannot uh, mitigate. Yes, because the Chelyabinsk one indeed came from the direction of the sun. We didn't see it coming. Exactly. There's nothing we can do. Against, uh, this is really a, a grey zone and probably for some time there won't be anything we can do. Perhaps 50 years from now there will be. What would that be? We might have telescopes positioned in orbit, uh, orbiting the sun and at different positions and they'd be able to observe so we'd have um, uh, different, so different telescopes looking at uh, the same region of the sky, and then we would see objects. Or we could have radar uh, scoring the, the, the interplanetary space and uh, detecting even smaller objects, like 10 meters in diameter or smaller.